from the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President, with Janelle Carter. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the President, a weekly news magazine which provides you with an in-depth look at the policies, programs, and work of the President of Guyana in his quest to realize the good life for all Guyanese. I'm your host, Janelle Carter. In the news this week, inclusionary democracy high on the administration's agenda as the president and opposition leader find common ground on Venezuela issue. UN mission arrives in Guyana to mediate controversy with Venezuela. Month-long celebrations ushered in in honor of Guyana's first peoples, and government engages stakeholder in historic social cohesion roundtable forum. Even before he was sworn in as the country's eighth executive president, David Granger understood the importance of the benefits of a governance structure that is founded on the principles of inclusivity. It came as no surprise when he emerged as leader of the political force that is comprised of six political parties. The president maintains this position and has time and time again called on all political parties to cast aside their differences and embrace shared governance. This week, President Granger reinforced his commitment to engaging with the opposition on matters of national interest when he reached out to opposition leader Barra Jagdew. A clear demonstration of his intention to cultivate a political culture of inclusionary democracy. Once um, Mr. Jagdew was elected leader of the opposition, I wrote him, inviting him to talks because as leader of the opposition, he has certain constitutional obligations. I am required by the constitution to consult with him on certain matters. And uh, it's important that we start that process as early as possible. In addition, uh, we feel that the 11th parliament has a lot of work to do. Um, we have to work on the 2016 um, budget. We have to deal with the situation in agriculture. We have to deal with the, um, particularly with uh, sugar and rice. We have to deal with the crime situation. The opposition leader has agreed to work with the president and his administration to deal with the daunting threat against Guyana's territorial integrity from neighboring state Venezuela. We have to deal with the urgent problem of the Venezuelan territorial controversy. And I'm, I'm very glad that uh, to have had the meeting with Mr. Jagdew, and I think that the country can look forward to good relations um, in, in the interest of uh, improving what I would like to call inclusionary democracy. The opposition and the government uh, want to work together to deal with the territorial and other issues facing us. The administration is working with the opposition to facilitate the establishment of five bipartisan committees in critical development areas. These are agriculture, the 2016 national budget, security, national unity, and the border issue with Venezuela. <music> Meanwhile, as promised by Secretary General of the United Nations Ban Ki-moon during the recently concluded CARICOM Heads of Government meeting in Barbados, a team from the United Nations arrived in Guyana earlier this week and met with President Granger. The purpose of our visit is to listen and learn from our counterparts in the Guyanese government and how they are viewing the, the, um, the moment, the current situation in the relations between the two countries, and to explore with them, get their views on the next steps. We've had a number of opportunities in recent months to have exchanges with both the Guyanese government and the Venezuelan government um, in New York, in the, the uh, margins of the CARICOM meeting, but this is our first visit to, to capitals. We're really here to inform ourselves of the views of the, the two governments and the, their views on the next steps and so that we can then advise the Secretary General of the, of the United Nations who will then um, speak to the presidents and with them craft a way for, agree on a way forward. Like Venezuela's decree 1787 which repeals their latest decree number 1859 is equally offensive to Guyana's territorial integrity since there continues to be a threat of use of force. The president made it clear to the UN that the good officers process and the Geneva Convention, which has been adopted in the past to address the dispute between the two countries, have been exhausted and a better solution is needed. In the short term, our objective will be to have all threats withdrawn. 
In the long term, we shall be seeking a permanent juridical solution under the auspices of the Geneva Agreement and under international law. Guyana has full and unfettered authority to unilaterally explore and exploit the living and non-living resources within its jurisdiction. Any objection to or obstruction of the exercise of such jurisdiction is contrary to international law. It is that time of the year again when Indigenous culture is highlighted and celebrated. Indigenous Heritage Month 2015, as it has been renamed, was officially launched on September 1 by President Granger at the Sophia Exhibition Center under the theme, Preserving Our Customs and Traditions. When I went down to Maruka, there I met Miss Caroline. There I had some Marasuka, and there I saw an Amerindian queen. Ghana's indigenous peoples are known for their perseverance, innovation, and their creative skills. The new administration has committed to supporting the economic development of Amerindian communities and bridging the development gaps that exist between the hinterland and the coast. In addition, the president's main message at the launch of Heritage Month centered around the importance of preserving indigenous culture and languages, which he says forms part of the Guyanese Mosaic, which have all come to know and love. Modernization and penetration by other cultures are threatening many of the traditions and values which our people hold dear. Culture encompasses the totality of a people's experience and existence. Culture incorporates customs and traditions. Culture is about values and relationships with one another and with the environment. It is about languages. And today, I wish particularly to express my hopes and future for indigenous languages in our republic. With this objective in mind, the government will recommence the Amerindian Languages Project at the University of Guyana. However, it will be renamed the Indigenous Language Project, as well as establishing the Hinterland Language Cultural and Sports Commission. I think it's quite timely, um, as the serious team reflects on preserving customs and traditions. I think having um, the language preservation of all the various tribes, Amerindian indigenous tribes in Guyana is something very important and um, something that the government should foster in helping our indigenous brothers and sisters to remember their identity and to find their identity as well. I think it's a great, great initiative. It is something that has been neglected for well over uh, 40 years and we look forward to all the things that this current administration can do. And they have taken a very bold first step in changing from Armenian to Indigenous. That gives us a different platform under various international organizations to address those issues. And we look forward to even bolder moves in implementing some of those things in our school's curriculum. To date, dictionaries have been produced for seven of the nine indigenous languages. We are missing the Patamona, as His Excellency said, and we are missing the Karim. But we do have people who can compile these languages because we had a workshop in collaboration with the Wukurama last November, and a part of it was, it was to introduce people to the languages, and we had speakers of the nine languages there present. And we've got people like Mr. Ovin Williams, who is Patamona, and he can do the Patamona Dictionary. And there's Marjorie Wilson from Batavia, who can compile the Carib Dictionary. So, but we were waiting on funding, and now with His Excellency's announcement, um, I know that we will be able to do this, and we look forward to working with these people and compiling all of the dictionaries in the, in the native languages. I am very glad for Mr. David Granger to bring up this initiative 
I would be very glad if they could introduce it to all the schools, the Apuayo and all the other tribes, the languages, because it's important. We don't want to be the, the, the generations to forget our, our tribal languages. I think um, Desri was introducing it before she died, but nobody never followed it up. So I'm glad for the president that he brought up this initiative. And I hope that the, my Amerindian indigenous people as whole will, and also other, other ethnicity would participate in it to learn the Amerindian language in Guyana. Other activities during the course of the month include the annual Heritage Pageant, a forum to reflect and celebrate the life and work of Stephen Campbell, the first Amerindian Member of Parliament, a fundraising dinner, and of course the much-anticipated Amerindian Village Day. This year, the village chosen is Santa Aratak in Region 3. Eradicating all remnants of mistrust and acrimony among Guyana's six peoples and promoting racial harmony, tolerance and unity is the overarching goal of the Roundtable Forum spearheaded by the Social Cohesion Ministry. Healing the nation and cultivating a culture of togetherness is a commitment that was made by the President and was a prominent feature in the AFC-APNU Coalition 100 Days Plan. The forum was held under the theme, Social Cohesion for Lasting Peace and Unity. It is nearly 50 years ago since we received our independence from the British government. That Guyana belongs to all who live here. It should by now be very clear to each of us, unfortunately, that is not the case. It is for this reason that we are gathered here essentially to explore collective ways of making this a reality. There is, I believe, Madam Chairperson, a clarion call by the people of Guyana for us to build a democracy that is united. President Granger said that ignoring the need for a more cohesive society can prove to be a detriment to national development. Differences between various social groups continue to threaten mutual trust and to weaken people's sense of belonging. Ignoring the absence of social cohesion risks allowing social instability to fester. Lack of social cohesion arises primarily as a result of economic and class divisions between groups. Human societies, political systems, communities, families, and even personal relationships are cemented by laws, values, and beliefs, and agreements among its members. Without these, there will be distrust, disharmony, and occasionally disorder. Our strategy is to foster greater integration among the groups in our country. Integration is intended to create a sense of belonging. It is intended to give recognition to groups and to allow them to freely practice their culture. Integration expands the space for diversity. It does not reduce diversity. We are therefore asking people not to abandon their cultural practices and adopt another culture but to bring their practices with them into the Guyanese mix. Over the past month, the ministry has conducted a series of outreaches in regions 3, 4, 5, 6 and 10 to engage the grassroots, giving them the opportunity to have their voices heard and their suggestions taken on board as the government works towards the creation of a policy that will effect positive changes on Guyana's social landscape. Chinese can do to live as one with love. Without love, we can't make it. We must stop with racialism and we must check up on love we heart. And if we, we work with we heart, everything will go good. If we could address race, this this country will move, move forward. But race cannot be addressed with, with, with one race. Both of the race, like how we have the parliament now, that we have the PPP and the, and the Young Coalition. Both of the parties would have to work, work together. You can't address race on one side saying, I am for you. You have to be for everybody. Then you'd address race. Race is a serious, serious problem in this country. 
If we can't work together, it means we can't address race. And I would call on the parliamentarians to work together. They talk about race, racial tension in our country, and the thing about race talk. If we stop seeing one another as a Kuli man and a black man, and see one another as Guyanese, we will move very far in this country. The president reaffirmed that his administration will place emphasis on eliminating inequality, forging political inclusivity, eradicating extreme poverty, improving access to education and unemployment and social protection in its bid to create a better Guyana for all citizens. Social cohesion has to begin from within each and every one of us. It has to be nurtured at the level of understanding. It has to become a part of our national ethos. A Guyanese cannot be an educated person unless he is educated or has educated himself in civics related to our one people society. Thanks for staying with us. What does the president do all week? Let's take a look inside his diary. During the week, the president met with a number of individuals and organizations, including the Interreligious Organization, representatives of the Guyana Cooperative Credit Union League, members of the West Burbies Chamber of Commerce, and members of the Guyana Association for the Visually Impaired. All of these interactions were held at the Ministry of the Presidency. Meanwhile, the president accredited two new ambassadors on September 2nd as the country continues to strengthen its presence in the global arena. His Excellency Mayang Dalyong was accredited as Korean's non-resident ambassador to Guyana, while His Excellency Nikolaos Kitrakoyes was accredited ambassador of Greece to Guyana. The president also signed the Book of Condolences, which was opened at the French consulate at Peter Rostri, Georgetown, following the death of France's honorary consul to Guyana, Pierre Saint Aroman. Saint Aroman served as the honorary consul for France to Guyana from the 12th of August 1991 up to the time of his passing on August 22, 2015, following a prolonged period of illness. Meanwhile, on Friday, the president shared a brief meeting with Dr. Josephine Ojiambo, Deputy Secretary General Political of the Commonwealth. Dr. Ojiambo paid a visit to Guyana to attend the Ministry of Social Cohesion's Roundtable Forum. Also present at the meeting was Commonwealth's Political Officer, Political Division, Alexander Kame, and Dr. Colin MacDonald, Interim Head of Office. Further, executive members of the African Cultural and Development Association paid a courtesy call on the country's leader. During that meeting, the members took the time to brief the president on the current works and plans of the association. Restoring all aspects of nationhood has been the passion of David Granger. And when he assumed office as president of our dear land, the country witnessed tangible demonstration of his true patriotism. Why is this aspect of leadership so important to President Granger? Let's take a look. There are certain deeply embedded values in any country. We have to respect the symbols of those of independence, the symbols of nationhood. We can't treat those symbols like, like, uh, of independence, the symbols of nationhood like that. Everything that represents our nation, our flag, our national anthem, our patriotic songs, all of these things, will be in the front of this administration. We must let Guyanese know, children know, that this is one nation, and these are the symbols. Monuments are of many kinds, since they are built to commemorate either a person or an important event in the historical life of a nation. In reality, they are the sum total of a nation's past and stand as a reminder of this for those present and those to come. When President Grange assumed office, one of his first projects was the restoration of the Independence Arch, Guyana's National Independence Monument, more commonly described as the Independence Arch. This monument can be described as one of the nation's most important national symbols. It was presented to Guyana by the Demerara Bauxite Company, Demba, as an independence gift 
and symbolized the end of an era while ushering in the birth of a nation. As part of President Granger's vision to preserve symbols of our nationhood, a committee for the restoration of the beauty of Georgetown and preparation for the 50th independence celebration was set up to attend to this contingency. That committee is headed by retired Colonel Laurie London with Mr. Bobby Vera as second in command. Mr. Lennox Canterbury is focal point person representing the Ministry of Education's Department of Culture, which has responsibility for all monuments. And it would be safe to say that this is just a start of more to come as it relates to President Granger's 2020 vision for preserving national symbols and monuments and working to keep national songs alive. For regular updates on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website at www.motp.gov.gy. Like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. I'm Janelle Carter reminding you to be a good citizen of your country. Goodbye for now.